Hi everybody, welcome to Curiosity the Science Show. This is the March episode of Curiosity, the episode number 29, March 2022. So uh, let us start the show with the science news from the last month. So the biggest science news was uh, Hunga Tonga in Tongan archipelago, the explosion uh, of the, uh, you know, underwater, uh, you know, the uh, volcano, plus the tsunami. Right, that happened on 15th January, though it, it's, it began its eruption early on in the month of uh, uh, December, right? And then this the real uh, eruption happened on 15th Jan and it, it actually uh, caused uh, widespread calamities in that small island. You know, it's a small island nation near Fiji, right? And near New Zealand, right? And the effects were felt all across the Pacific. Even the Japan and uh, even people were died drowned in peru you know it's so far away isn't it in the us too so yes so some uh, estimates says that the eruption the the joule the kilojoule if you look at it is almost 100 times more ex, uh, you know more powerful than Hir the atom bomb in hiroshima and nagasaki and uh, coming to the nuclear there is a fission milestone of uh, uh, you know fusion fusion milestone in the in the uk it's by Jet Labs uh, in the UK. They are, they are working for a small fusion reactors, you know, and uh, it is a, it's an amazing milestone. Fusion, by the way, is uh, uh, deuterium and tritium. Uh, you are combining with the, the uh, with extreme heat, uh, you know. Then uh, you you are actually making you are combining it to make you are fusing these nuclei of these two uh, you know atoms to create huge uh, power so that is exactly what is happening in uh, in the sun so it's anything solar like biological system are all fusion powered rather than fission powered isn't it so that's very interesting and another very interesting news is that xenotransplantation this happened in january a pig heart got transplanted into a man you know so the man the, the person's name is called david bennett senior and he's perfectly fine isn't it? It's amazing, isn't it? That it's uh, technically it's called xeno transplantation. Starts with X, you know. So you're you're getting the uh, organ from, uh, you know, uh, 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 non-human animals, right? Especially primates or pig. So the primates have some ethical concern. In this case, it is a pig heart got transplanted, isn't it? So that has got several dimensions, uh, including like the organ you know the uh, organ transplantation to get a suitable uh, human donor is really tough because people are not really aware of the importance of the organ donation by the way i have signed up in noto government of india for all body donation including all organs eyes and liver whatever it is plus my whole body will go uh, for medical and forensics research post death so if you haven't please consider you know, signing up with the NOTO of the government of India, okay? And yes, so this is very interesting, this uh, Xeno transplantation, isn't it? So there has been some attempt here in India as well. In Assam, the doctor tried uh, to transplant the pig heart into uh, a human, of course, uh, lived but died very soon. But this is very interesting. It, he is perfectly fine now. Another interesting news which came across, which I, I read in the last month, is the near-death experience. If you look at the fMRI of the people who are dying, you will see that, uh, you know, that the kind of epileptic patient, right? This, this study has been done. The whole life from the, uh, you know, the, from the childbirth, the, the early, early ages, still uh, the recent memory, the entire memory flashes before our eyes, just before the moment of death well that is what the fmri says so it's very interesting isn't it so no one knows like how the, the ultimate right we all have to undergo once in our life that is the penultimate uh, moment of our life right isn't it so yeah uh, the whole life flashing before us you know and another remarkable study published in pinas that says about the drugs and rivers the pharmacological pollution of the world's rivers many countries they did the study they see that the drugs, the you know, the, the rivers and uh, freshwater resources are highly polluted with the drugs. So it is leading to uh, yet another, uh, you know, the uh, calamity called antibiotic resistance. In the last episode, we covered this topic, right? In last year alone, if you combine 
the people who are who died because of this antibiotic resistance it uh, exceeds if you combine the death caused by malaria and uh, aids together you know so so many people are dying because of this antibiotic resistance so that actually brings us back pulls us back to pre antibiotic era so what would be the future of the surgery if antibiotic resistance is getting really common you know so the drug pollution in world's river that is really an alarming issue friends another news which i read is about the chernobyl of course the ukraine russia war is uh, happening when i'm talking to you this and yeah so chernobyl is in, situated in uh, ukraine you know uh, by the way the, the disaster happened way back in 86 1986 you know chernobyl disaster so right now uh, you know what is happening is that there is a spike in radiation in the chernobyl a nuclear reactor though it is decommissioned but still a uh, spent fuel is still there right so that uh, that spike is alarming and uh, because of i mean uh, does it have an impact on uh, or is it is it because of this war it has started spiking no one knows and another one uh, interesting paper which published in uh, uh, in the last month is about the uh, two giant predation on planet earth orcas observed devouring the tongue of the blue whale the blue whale is such a huge you know it's like a monstrous creature though they are really cute isn't it and uh, orcas are killer whales in southern ocean i have seen many orcas during my voyage to antarctica you know so orcas are uh, kind of smallish fish uh, if you compare with the blue whale of course it's getting inside the blue whale's mouth and it's devouring it's eating its tongue at just before the the uh, killing the blue whale you know so it's the first ever documented hunt of the largest animal on the planet very interesting right even uh, yes blue whale is not beyond the predation you know so there are predators for the blue whales to the orcas now coming to the last month's discoveries first one is the uh you know you might know uh, two variants of uh, marijuana you know so the strains or species many people say it is sativa and indica right the cannabis right if you ever go to amsterdam i had been there and the shopkeepers say wow you are from india then uh, you know we have uh, indica with us indica is for body relaxation and if you want sativa sativa is for head you know it will uh, cause you complete relaxation of your mind and uh, whatever the creative thing so the latest research published in nature plants it's a new journal no impact factor but it's a highly reputed journal from the nature it says that the entire classification these two things sativa and indica of the cannabis is myth there, there is no such thing you know so both are same species not even strain genetically identical friends so it could could it be land race again there are land races you know so if you look at the cannabis throughout the world every single thing is a hybrid these days you know so there might be some land race but still land race if you want to say there should be some genetics in it right so if it is expressing a uh, terpenoid actually you know so the terpenes are are they expressing like thc is or uh, there might be some variation in response to local climate where you are cultivating it right next story is the federally funded sex education programs linked to decline in teen birth rates the new study says so it's very interesting that sex ed pays uh, it decreases the teen pregnancy because they are uh, uh, they are aware of the safe sex practices in one of the last episode we say that uh, we covered this topic of sex ed that the netflix series is a lot more better than school sex education syllabus you know very interesting isn't it and another story the third story of the month is that incorporating the sexual pleasure the sex can be pleasurable that is that is very very important no so if you incorporate that into the, the educational system the sexual education programs can improve the sex safe sex behaviors very interesting you know so uh, rather than you know labeling sex as something unethical and uh, you know so like in many of these countries uh, extremely uh, religious countries they say that the best option in the sex ed in the school curriculum is abstinence 
do not do any sexual activity. So it's instead of that kind of uh, sex education, but if you incorporate the pleasure, uh, you know, in it, so it is much better. That is what the, the new study says. By the way, you can access all this study, all the paper, the show notes linked up below in the description section of this YouTube video. Fourth story is that the young humans use saliva sharing to infer the close relationship. The, you know, the very small babies, the infants, they actually make, they were, they, uh, you know, the, the study says that they keep on observing others. Are they actually sharing the saliva? Like, for example, kiss, French kiss, the parents might be kissing. So that means that they are really close by, isn't it? And uh, strangers, we don't kiss. So sharing the saliva or sharing the same spoon, for example. So that is a proxy to infer how close or how uh, you know how far the relationship between the human being is. Uh, look, uh, infants don't even have any communication, right? The, the, uh, the, of course, they don't have any linguistic ability. So they need to take cues from our behavior. So it's very interesting paper, right? Published in uh, Royal Society of London uh, Journal. So the US has increased its funding for the public school. The funding is tremendously increasing, at least in the US and other developed countries. The new research shows that additional spending on operation is more important rather than simply infrastructure like building, you know. So, uh, such as teacher salaries and support services positively affected the test score, dropout rates, and post-secondary enrollment. But the expenditures on new buildings and renovations had little impact. So, this is a very interesting study. Uh, for the policymakers, so if you have money to spend on education so instead of simply building a big big buildings uh, that looks outstanding the infrastructure wise and spending on other uh, classroom infrastructure for example uh, you know fancy in, in inter interactive classrooms you know interactive uh, uh, what do you call them the board right the presenting board that used to be now uh, that used to be a fashion but even now the companies sell it complete trash it doesn't work it doesn't improve the pedagogical skills you know uh, i'm a staunch opponent of those kind of technological innovations but it doesn't mean that a flip class is not effective it is you know but this kind of simply installing one screen uh, you know that supposedly have touch sensitivity uh, the companies claim that it will drastically improve the student performance no it doesn't so this study says that if you pay if you increase the salary of the teachers that have a better impact on the student's outcome, right? Very interesting, isn't it? Now, next story is that the scientists make paralyzed mice walk again. So, uh, you know, the mice, uh, I mean, especially the spinal cord injuries, you know, so it is, uh, it's really devastating, isn't it? So they can walk again by giving them the spinal cord implant. So that is very interesting, implantation, you know, uh, like prosthetic limbs, right? So this is very, very interesting field. Uh, yes, of the research. So, 12 out of 15 mice suffering from long-term paralysis started moving normally. Fantastic news, right? The science works, friends. You know, so that is amazing. Human trial is expected in three years, aiming to offer all paralyzed people hope that they may walk again. Yes, so <laughs> science is really amazing, right? Makes, uh, yes, promises by heaps. At one time, you know, uh, so those are sometimes it is gradual, sometimes it is, uh, you know, like uh, a punctuated equilibrium, isn't it? So it is like paradigm shift. So scientists, the next uh, next topic, the seventh uh, news is again about science and technology. That here the engineers they have created a new material that is stronger than the steel and as light as plastic and can easily be manufactured in large quantities and can be molded to. Very interesting, isn't it? So the new material is two-dimensional polymer that self-assembled into the sheets, unlike all other one-dimensional polymer. So usually polymer is only one-dimensional. That means just one line, you know, and then you're weaving like thread weaving, isn't it? But this one is a two-dimensional, like a sheet of paper. Very interesting. It's high tensile strength is a, a big advantage for this uh, you know this particular uh, new material so this you know this uh, uh, yes yeah, so the chemical engineers and uh, uh, material science so that is really interesting isn't it 
I love material science, you know, new, new materials are coming. But by the way, beware of, yes, so one thing which I uh, came across last month is the, uh, you know, the water resistant uh, spray or whatever the material. If you're buying the material that claims to be water resistant, then it must be having certain polymers that cause the cancer. So stay away from buying, for example, your falls tree in your home couch, for example, you know sofa set in your living room so if you're buying a new uh, sofa set that claims that it has uh, it's treated for water resistant that means that it is sprayed with the polymer and that polymer is linked with cancer so stay away from it you know and next story is that the brains of patients who died as a result of covid-19 infection displayed some of the same molecular changes found in the brains of those with Alzheimer's disease. So there is a connection, you see. So you know the uh, alpha myeloid protein in the Alzheimer's disease. And quite similarly, what is happening in the case of COVID-19 serious infections, you know. So that findings may explain why some long-term COVID sufferers report memory problems like Alzheimer's. They do have, uh, you know, the memory issues, isn't it? So similar way, that is the reason might be that COVID-19 patients are also having this, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the memory issues, you know. Hamsters' testicles shrink after being infected with COVID-19. That is what the new study says. So another uh, ramification of COVID-19 is on sexual dysfunction, you know. So the testicle size decreases, it shrinks. So it might be true for human beings too, you know. So this again is covered in one of the earlier on episode of pan, uh, the COVID-19 amidst pandemic, right? That the sexual uh, yeah, libido is found to be uh, decreasing in male uh, post-COVID-19 infection, you know, especially after severe infection. So scientists have found that exercise increases the levels of certain proteins known as uh, known to strengthen the communication between the brain cells, the synapses, you know, inside synapses. It strengthens this, which may be a key factor in keeping dementia at bay. So if you have in this kind of memory problems or, uh, you know, decreasing cognitive abilities, then exercise is a very good antidote. And also for depression, exercise increases. This, uh, you know, the, the new study says that why it's so. Because of the synapses, the, the neuronal plasticity is increased, you know, uh, and neurogenesis too. Very interesting, isn't it? 11 stories that the scientists have found that switching from a life of inactivity, that sedentary lifestyle to one involving 20 minutes of running, cycling or other moderate or vigorous exercise per day, as late as 70 years, reduces the risk of cancer, the heart attacks, you know, heart attack risk is reduced. So coronary heart diseases and heart failure by 52 percentage in men, and 8 percentage in women that's very stark in contrast no the, the women is pretty low than the men but if you're a man and also if you're a woman also it doesn't matter it please incorporate some exercise so uh, you know the, in my talk on prioritization and uh, personal productivity and time management i always say that you should prioritize your task number one in every one of our priority list is exercise and of course, number two would be nutrition and getting sleep. These three should be on the top of any priority list, you know. So exercise, that is amazing, you know. And also you don't really have to, if, if you are old man, 70 years, doesn't mean, no problem. You should still start. If you are still sedentary, uh, then you should actually start doing some rigorous exercise. That is what the study says. 12th story that the study found that adding trees to the pasture land, that is a grassland, if you add the trees, that, that the process technically is known as silver pasture. <clears throat> you know, silver pasture is <clears throat> adding trees into the cropland. You know, it can cool the local temperature by up to 2.4 degrees Celsius for every 10 metric tons of woody material added per hectare, depending on the density of trees, in especially in the tropics, you know. So it can tremendously cool down the silver pasture. So just by adding the trees into the, the cropland, the monoculture cropland, like paddy, you know, the rice paddy fields. Fantastic, right? So it can, it can of course, can give a, 
uh, the range of other benefits for humans and wildlife too, isn't it? Very interesting. So next story is that the 13th story is that denying the existence of human evolution. So people who, the conspiracy theorist who says that, no, human beings are static, we are not evolving. So this kind of denialism is associated with higher levels of prejudice, racist attitudes, and support for discriminatory behaviors according to a series of eight studies from across the world. You know, so it's a, it's a large number study. 63,549 cohorts. So it's really a large number, right? So what, could, what would be the reason for it? So of course, uh, not believing in the evolution despite overwhelming widely available and validated evidence is a sign that you fundamentally have a tendency to ignore the facts that do not suit your beliefs. So if you believe in something, and if the evidence is presented in contrary, you don't believe it. You don't take that evidence, right? There is something called confirmation bias. It's very well known, the cognitive bias. So this is also the root of a, a lot of hardwired religious and political beliefs. If you question their ideological belief, then they protest something called cognitive dissonance, you know? So deflecting and avoiding evidence contrary to their book or their beliefs. You know, so being prejudiced is simply the result of the same defense mechanism, not trying to understand the person you are prejudiced against, person of the gender, you know, uh, and being close-minded. So that is really interesting, right? So anti-discrimination, when I'm talking to you this on 1st of March, today is the world's anti-discrimination day, the U United Nations anti-discrimination day. So it's very, very important. So it might not be simple uh, evolution, believe or not, in the Darwin's theory, but also on many of these conspiracy theories. So the believe in conspiracy theory, uh, if you believe in such theory, like for example, anti-vaccine conspiracy theory, if you happen to be that, then, uh, you know, time to reflect upon, you might be prejudicial, you might be casteist, you know, think about it. 14th story is that analyzing uh, the calories burned by more than 6,600 people. Researchers suggest that our metabolism don't start to decline until the age 60, you know, and even when you are 60, it's very gradual, the, the you know, the, the metabolism is very, very gradual, 0.7 percentage per year. So that doesn't mean that if you're really old, uh, metabolic requirement is same. No, it is not, you know. So if you're 90 years old, then your requirement is around 26 percentage fewer calories each day than someone in the midlife. So, you know, that is uh, what the uh, compounding interest, that's how it works, right? So, yeah, so the decline in the metabolic function is gradual and very, very slow, though. 15th story, reusable bottles made from soft plastic release several hundred different chemical constituents uh, in, the, in the water, the drinking water that if you drink from the plastic bottle. So, beware of soft plastic, like pet bottles, you know? So have a habit of not buying any of this kind of mineral water, for example, whatever the company that you're, you're getting this mineral water from your market. Usually you can squeeze it, right? It's very, very soft. But if the, the plastic used is pretty hard, uh, that is uh, something called tritan, you know, like Nalgin bottles, then it's safer. That is what the study says, you know? So I usually <laughs> prefer to, to drink with the glass. So glass is much better. Yeah, tastes good. You know, seltzer water, right? Uh, yeah, so had I been drinking the same thing with the, you know, the soft plastic bottle, then definitely you will you will get some, you know, the smell and taste of it, right? It's something like mineral water bottle uh, that you just keep it there in your car, you know, and then you go somewhere, go, go for a movie and come back. Then you, you try to drink it. Then you can really feel sm the smell of plastic in it, you know, and taste of plastic. So th these things are nothing but chemical substances. So we still don't know what are the health impact. It might cause cancer, friends. Stay away from it. 16th story. The new research suggests that the ancient trees possess far more than ave inspiring presence and a suit of ecological services to the forest. So the ancient trees are really, really important, you know, rather than these new trees that can fast grow like eucalyptus or, uh, you know, 
acacia, right? All these are really fast growing trees, but some trees are really old, right? Uh, for example, the banyan, big banyan, for example, you know, the, the Indian national tree, very uh, slow growing, right? And we do have certain, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the, the bike path, which I usually commute daily. So there is a place called, uh, uh, you know, uh, a place called, what is that place? It's called, uh, uh, yes, so it's, uh, uh, yeah, Tiona, <laughs> the, the village is called Tiona. So the Tiona village has got a, a, a very famous tree that is basically the banyan tree right in the center of the, uh, you know, uh, center of the street. Uh, it's not the street, no, it's like a crossover, isn't it? So that defines the place where I should take a turn off my bike, isn't it? So that tree, you can see that there is a cultural integration. There is a, there is a small temple constructed underneath the tree. So I, I like that concept. You are integrating the, the conservation into the religion. So because of that, people are, you know, they, they will not do any harm to that tree because a tree is treated with holiness, isn't it? So I, I really like that spirit. So yes, so this kind of very old trees, there is a concept in evolutionary biology called evolutionary capacitance, something like the real capacitors. So they store and release the electron, right? The, the, the electric charge the uh, you know electrical capacitors that we use in chalk in uh, tube light for example so evolutionary ca capacitance is that these old tree species and other things they you know they store the genetic diversity and they release as and when required so especially important because of the climate adaptation how the trees adapt to changing climate and trees are not just tree you know they have got uh, the whole ecosystem behind it for example uh, bacteria and fungus living in its rhizosphere you know so yes though that old trees like 300 years back uh, till now the tree experienced tremendous number of uh, this kind of uh, uh, drought for example various stress you know so that is really important that, uh, in light of this evolutionary capacities and finally on 17th story of this month is that U.S. corn-based ethanol is worse for the climate than the gasoline. So if you think that, okay, biofuel is amazing for the planet Earth, no. So the study says that, uh, you know, this uh, corn-based biofuel, the carbon footprint is a lot higher than ethanol itself. You know, So simply by switching into a biofuel uh, will not reduce your carbon footprint. Friends. It can even increase, it can backfire. Very interesting, isn't it? Please do join our Facebook group to stay abreast with the world of science. You know, many of these stories have been uh, posting in our uh, Facebook group by our volunteers, the moderators of the Young Academy of India. Now, coming to the observance, today is, as I told you, Zero Discrimination Day. You know, 3rd of May, uh, 3rd of uh, uh, March is World Wildlife Day. 8th is Women's Day. And 10th is Women Judges Day. You know, in judicial system, as, as a judge, uh, you know, the women are really low, right? In, in all, all around the world. So it is to increase the women's representation in judicial system. And 20th is World Happiness Day. Yes, happiness matters in everybody's life. And comes 21st March, the month of March is defined for me as a month of you know, equinox, March equinox. I shy away from calling it as a spring equinox. Right here in the northern hemisphere, it is spring because we are trying. Uh, we are going towards the spring. You know, and uh, yeah, if you are living in the southern hemisphere, it is vernal equinox. That is autumnal equinox. So there is a bias, north south bias. So if you say March equinox, there is no such bias, right? So March equinox, friends, is the first day, first sunset. The only sunset in, uh, you know, in uh, Antarctica, and the only sunrise in our Arctic, the the North Pole will experience its only sunrise. Next six months is gonna be summer in Arctic, you know. So this is on twenty first. It's called Novruz Day. Novruz is new day because the first day of spring. Spring is when you know the showers come in and uh, you know the flowers bloom isn't it yes yeah, so navruz day 
and elimination of racial discrimination that is another day which is connected to today also so no? today is called zero discrimination day and 21st is called elimination of racial discrimination day and world poetry day world down syndrome day and world forest day so many days are coming on 21st right and yes yeah, so Navruz day is on 21st but in this year equinox will happen on 20th especially here in india it is 20th you know so calendar day 20th is the equinox day in india though Navruz day it's an annual event in uh, un calendar it's on, on 21st 22nd is world water day water conservation is extremely important and a new study which i didn't say in here is the you know uh, they analyzed while toothbrushing, are you actually, uh, you know, turning off your tap water or not? So, Americans usually have this habit, bad habit, that they will not turn off their tap, you know, the water tap. And they, you know, the, the study assessed how much water they destroy, you know, they simply, uh, you know, waste it. So, it was in gallons, friends. Uh, you know billions of gallons so it is it's amazing how little uh, you know life changes can pay a huge dividend you know so that's amazing isn't it so 23rd is world meteorology day so meteorologists are really important for predicting the the, the weather and the climate change too isn't it the meteorology is extremely important 24th is world tuberculosis day to spread awareness about tb and the vaccine against it we do have vaccine uh, decades back, right? I also got BCG vaccine, Bastos Calmitic Guerin, right? And dignity of victims of human rights violations, that is also falling on 24th. And 25th is Remembrance of Slavery Day, uh, especially transatlantic slave trade, you know, and solidarity with missing or detained staff members, that is also falling on 25th. Though the UN says the staff member are its staff, their staff member, but whatever the staff be, whatever the governmental or non-governmental organizations be, uh, the workers, you know, if you are, uh, the workers are being missing or detained as part of their professional execution. So this is a day to remember, you know, their contribution. So that's amazing, isn't it? So March has all these observances, friends. And coming to astronomy related observances, all these are binocular events. If you have a small binocular, you can see everything. And also to guide you, as usual, I, I suggest you, the app is called Skyview app. It's a free freeware in Google and Apple. You can, you can get this uh, app. Of course, if you pay, you, it gets better features, but normal Skyview is absolutely fine. Uh, you don't need pro version though, no? 12th is Venus-Mars conjunction. So both these planets are very close by. 14th is Gamma Nomid meteor shower. 16th is Venus Mars conjunction. So second one. Uh, you know, if you miss on 12th, you can you can plan to see again this conjunction on 16th. 18th is worm moon. That is a full moon. In the month of March is known as worm moon, according to the uh, you know uh, red Indians. Almanac, right? The American, uh, yeah, so tribes, peoples, almanac, right? Worm moon. Very interesting, isn't it? The worm. I uh, remember it in the February, uh, you know, the, the full moon, it, it used to be called, Fab full moon is called a snow moon, you know, in the amidst of snow, isn't it? And 20th here in India is a March equinox, you know, extremely important day, right? The first day of spring. And 21st is the Venus at greatest elongation, the western elongation, right? The Venus you can see on 21st. And 28th is amazing. Four celestial objects will come in same frame. 28th of March. Mark on your calendar, please. 28th March, I'll be in Jammu. I have a, a, a conference coming up in Jammu University, you know, uh, in Department of Botany. So uh, it's more... Uh, yeah, sorry, it's Moon, Mars, Venus, and Saturn. All four objects, especially the three planets, Mars, Venus, and Saturn, it will be near the Moon. Very interesting, right? One photo, you can get all the four objects in it. So that is what the astronomical observation. So I'm looking forward to it.
I'm also looking forward to celebrating the equinox. You know, the March equinox that is on 20th March. And opportunities, we have several opportunities, friends. Please check out the show notes. Uh, our volunteers of Young Academy of India have contributed tremendously. Several opportunities are there for the PhD studentship as well as for the, the grants and internship. You know, to read a few, Gandhi Fellowship is open now, Future Leaders in Action, ICGB Fellowship is open now you know, for doing the, the PhD in ICGB in Trieste in Italy as well as in here in New Delhi. So, TAR, a fund for the teachers, you know, their associations, associateship, right? And any of you, the teachers would like to work with me, you're, you're welcome, you may apply for it. And the PhD studentship with me is also open, you know, the, the Central University of Punjab's position. I have got two PhD positions work to work with me. So if you are interested, you're welcome to apply. Uh, EMBL, European Molecular Biological Laboratories in Heidelberg in the in the Germany. Uh, their PhD program is open now also as Okinawa University down south of Japan. So Japanese PhD program, you know. So please have a look in our Young Academy of India a page that lists more exciting curiosity driven research stories every day and please do subscribe to our you know our page as well as the google group and this youtube channel if you haven't yet and link for our page as well as the stories all all the stories featured in this episode are in the show notes so i wish you a very productive uh, march the month of equinox and february i hope the feb had been very good for you to add on some personal milestone in the month of February, I got inducted, elected as a fellow of the Linnean Society, very prestigious society in London. And also I'm now um, a panelist in IUCN, you know, the Conservation of Nature, Geneva-based, a Swiss-based international organization. IUCN is very well known for the red data book, right? And also all these uh, vulnerable and all those, you know, and, uh, you know, the species conservation, uh, yes, so the, you know, the status, isn't it? So I'm part of the communication team now, the, the education, the, the nature education, especially the science communication. So I'm uh, really thankful to the IUCN, uh, you know, the people who elected me in it. So there is a formal election process, you know. And also many of the members of the Young Academy of India did support my candidature. So... A big thanks to all of you. So I wish you a very productive month of March, the month of March equinox. And I will see you soon uh, with yet another exciting stories in the month of April. Till then, goodbye.